one of the workers that came to us was working in a restaurant on Nicolette and he was working six days a week, 12 hour days every day and he would just get paid a salary so it averaged out to $4 an hour. He complained and said, I, I think minimum wage is higher than that. And he was just trying to have a conversation with the employer about it. And they threw a firing pan at his head uh, for complaining about it. So when, when people, when that's the reality in the workplace that you complain and somebody throws a frying pan at your head, if it threatens you with physical harm or can take away your economic bottom line by firing you and there's no consequences, nobody complains. Take your hand out of my pocket. Our focus is it's not about case management, it's more about organizing and building power and moving workers to solve their own problems. And we do it through, you know, organizing, educating, lobbying and empowering workers. And we're the link between um, the worker and, and really um, getting them community support. Some of them are telling us, hey, you know, I was denied this and, and I fought back and, and I was allowed to have it. <laughs> as a worker center kind of being the connector between um, the workers and those larger government pieces and really utilizing those in our campaigns. I know in our campaign um, with a convenience store, we have filed unfair labor practice complaints and, and are doing class action um, a Department of Labor and Industry because they have people working overnights by themselves for eight hours in the store alone and it's against their policy to lock the door. Well, how do you go to the restroom? How do you have a lunch break if you're working eight hours in a store overnight by yourself? And so really using the government agencies and building relationships with them, but connecting the workers um, to those agencies to file those complaints. It takes a little bit of process and, and trust mostly the essence is the, the awareness of, you know, you have rights, there are agencies and there are uh, government systems that while they're not the most effective and they're going to be slow, they're here to protect you and you should not be, you know, you should not be afraid of utilizing them. There's a combination of both using legal avenues and the threats of legal avenues, but there's also direct action. Entonces, eso mismo, eh, in impactaba al patrón porque como ellos están acostumbrados a robar, a robar y nadie eh, les pone un, un control, ellos era como miedo a que les descubras cuánto ellos roban. Entonces un paso que ellos hacían era que preferían pagar a que los lleves a una corte sobre una demanda. Y en estos ocho años hemos recuperado 1.8 millones de dólares en puro sueldo robado. Suena como una victoria, ¿verdad? Pero la realidad es que es un sistema quebrado. So we, we really have to think about what are ways to change the laws to make sure that workers, yes, can get a higher wage, but how can they um, have a voice to make sure that they can complain make sure that when their wages are stolen, they could go forward and talk about it without some consequence. Until that happens, wage theft isn't going to end.